if you could first uh, introduce yourself to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Mohammed Sayyid. <clears throat> I am the president of the managing committee of the masjid. Okay. Uh, well, the first, I mean, the first question obviously being among so many stories surrounding the mosque. Uh, could you give us an account of the history and the origin of the mosque? Yeah, it's very interesting. The history goes back almost to say uh, fifth or sixth century. Uh, the, we have a we have a oral tradition here, uh, which uh, it's almost we have a, a, a tradition, documented oral I mean orally documented tradition uh, for the last say about uh, 250 years. Okay. We do have a date here 629. Mm -hmm. uh, that date is with us for the last say about uh, 250 years, okay. and uh, it's believed. No, we sincerely believe that one of the Chera kings, the last of the Chera king, of course, Chera had two dynasties, the earlier one and the later one. Uh, it's again a controversy. But the last of the Chera king, the strong tradition that he abdicated the throne and he left for Makkah. Uh, again, there are a lot of, you know, different variations of the story, small ones, local ones, there are different variations. But the most dominant tradition is that that uh, when one he was in the balcony, he saw the moon being split into two parts. Mm -hmm. And then this was really disturbing. Okay. So he called his court astrologers and they were not able to give him a cons convincing mm -hmm. uh, answer or you know, explanation. Mm -hmm. So this was lingering in his mind. Mm -hmm. And you know, Kodigalur uh, was known as Musris in early days, yes. you know. So Musris was one of the most important ports. In fact, Pliny the Elder, you know, the story of Pliny the Elder, he said this is the most important port in India. He said it is primum memorium in day. That means it is the most important port. So we had a long tradition of you know so tra trade with the East and the West. Mm -hmm. Chinese were here, Greeks, Romans, Phoenicians, Arabs. They were all coming here. And uh, see, of course, we had, that means that we had a very long trade relations. So when Prophet came over there, there was a lot of social change in Arabia. Yes. So the Arabs were here, even pre-Prophet period Arabs were here. And when they came after the Prophet, you know, naturally there will be interactions with the king. And king wanted to know who is what's happening over there. You know, niceties, you know, when they give an audience, you know, the, the major uh, I mean, merchants come over here, they usually have an audience with the king. And during that, you know, they might have exchanged it, and the king wanted to know what's happening. And, uh, and, and when he had that vision, you know, the moon was being split into two parts, that vision, he explained, you know, he just casually asked them, maybe I had a vision, something like that, might have to be there. So they gave an explanation that this could be the miracle which prophet might have shown over there. So there was a, and the king wanted to convert to Islam. Convert, I mean, he wanted to accept yeah, Islam, yeah. accept Islam. There is another interesting feature also, because the seventh century, by the seventh century, Buddhism is dead and gone. Yes. There were no more Buddhist traditions in Kerala, and this was a defunct uh, Buddhist temple. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kunjigutan Tabran is one of our earliest, the royal poet of Kodingalur. In one of his poems, he says that this was a Buddhist temple which was handed over to the Muslim community. So the, the story is again like this, when Chervan Birmal wanted to know what, uh, he wanted to know about Islam and then he wanted to meet Prophet. Then it should be the period of the Prophet, but uh, we are not really sure. Uh, probably it may take, you can take a hundred years later. Then whatever it is, he went to Makkah and he wanted to come back. On his way back, he died in Arabia. That's a strong, very strong, tradition is there, the legacy is right. Now we also have a collaborative evidence to say that the king died over there because the present day Salala in Oman, there is a place called uh, you know, the Sumuharram. The, the local tradition over there also says that there is a tomb over there and the tomb belongs to the uh, yeah, king of Malabar. So we have, uh, on this side of the Arabian Sea, we have a story that uh, the king had gone over there, he died on the way back, and the, they have the story over there which says they have a tomb over there. It's quite good. 
acceptable. Now, it is not a question of period. Now, what was the period, you know, uh, when this happened? No, the, uh, during the uh, pre-Christian era, pre-Christian era, uh, before, you know, before the common era, uh, there was a port in uh, present-day Yemen, which the archaeologists have excavated and then believed that this was the area of the, this was the uh, city of the Qun Sheba. And then later, the, there was a definite shifting in the, the pattern because of this probably seismic or, you know, other, <clears throat> there, you know, there may be seismic or other activities of the geology. There was a shifting of the port from towards the eastern side. Mm -hmm. So the Kunshiba's port, which was called Korauri, mm -hmm. then became later, you know, the port shifted a little towards the eastern, and then it became, yeah, Sumuharam. Sumuharam, and then we had Al Bali, the different ports are there. The king's tomb is somewhere near a port, which is no more present because that, that also got you know, damaged. That, the, the, the period of that port was between the 2nd century AD to 8th or 9th century AD. It is near that period, the port, you have the tomb over there. So, naturally, inference is the king was coming, he was coming back home. Then he died over there. Naturally, it should be the, near the port where he, he wanted to come back. Uh, the period of the port is estimated between the 2nd uh, century AD to 8th century AD, 8 to 9th century AD. So it might have happened somewhere in the 8th, 7th or 8th century. Uh, that's, uh, that's the tradition. And, and so, you know, when the king knew that he is going to die, when he realized of about his imminent death, uh, he wrote letters and handed over to the, his companions. After some period, the companions came with a letter. They handed over to the king of Kodingalu. And they were presented with this. Uh, the temple was handed over to the Muslim community because it was no more being used. Mm -hmm. So this was handed over to the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. And they used, started using it as masjid. Till 10th century. Tenth, we have an oral tradition again that by the 10th century, there was some construction going on here. And there was also collaborative evidence that in 1962, our archaeology department, Indian archaeology department came in and they did an excavation on the basement. Mm -hmm. And they found out that, that that building, the basement belonged to the 10th century. So again, the, the, there is evidence we have. Mm -hmm. Then of course, might have, you know, the population is very low. There is one thing interesting is that, you know, this is a, one of the very interesting is that, you hardly had a Muslim community around the masjid till 1948. Till 1948, we never we had only two families around the masjid. So somewhere around one kilometers around the radius, we had only two Muslim families, and those two Muslim families were the employees of the masjid. Uh, that's it. And uh, so that itself shows that this was a gift. You know, uh, the usual human pattern is that you have a community. Any community, any religion, any community, you have a community, there will be a common pond, eh? a pond and a temple somewhere there, in the middle of the community. That's really happened, that's the way it always happened. But here, you have a masjid here with absolutely no Muslim population around. That's very interesting, very interesting. Yeah. That shows, you know, that shows that this was... Uh, this was a Buddhist temple and it was handed to the Muslim community and the Muslim community don't have to protect it because this was a gift. So there, there was no need for anybody else and anybody to be around. And now the shifting of the Muslim population started coming only by 1948. It's only after 1948 that we started having. Now, even now the majority are Hindus. Even now, the people are living around the masjid is mainly Hindus. We have only about say 12 or 13. 13 or 14 uh, families. That could have influenced the architecture of the... Yeah, architecture. The... And again, you know, if you take um, the first... Uh, the the, the Indo-Saracian and Indo-Persian type of architecture, you know, like so what you see in the Taj Mahal and other things. Mm -hmm. The first masjid in, K in Kerala came only in 1960s. Even before it was all like this, you know, our own original Kerala architecture, very similar to the temple architecture. Very, it very true. Yeah, very. This is local architecture. Local materials are used. Local architecture. Uh, it's uh, quite. Uh, unfortunately, we had uh, 
damaged. The sense of lack of history is in, we are in the process of reconstructing it again. Some different faiths that come to this mosque. Yeah. Uh, in what way has that influenced the customs and the rituals that have been in the mosque? Is that, is, not is that much, you know, not much, you know. I don't remember there is any uh, cultural, uh, there was a lot of cultural interactions, but that was at the level of the social relations, but not in the ritual relations. There's not much of them. There's not much not of them. Not much of them, no. And uh, can you explain the life of the community of Muslims and what it is like around this mosque? And if that plays a significant role to the communities around? I would ask you to come early in the morning by about 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock, okay. be near the masjid. Or you just wait for another one hour, two hours, by the sunset you can come over there and see a lot of non-Muslims coming over there, praying, you know. Yes. It's still there. Okay. That's it. Highly secular, highly inclusive. Highly inclusive. And what are the celebrations and the festivals? Like Not much of, you know, yeah, the, this is, I don't know why in many other places, in many other masjids, we have a lot of functions and celebrations. We only celebrate the two Eids, you know. Okay. You know, Eid al Asa, Eid al Fitr. And then, of course, the prophets in a birthday. Mm -hmm. These are the only functions which we have here. And in what way does the mosque involve the community and community around? Yeah, community around. You know, we have a lot of social, you know, yeah, charities, organizations are there. So, I mean, charity functions are there. Okay. Uh, mainly, you know, we give, we look after the destitute of the masjid. Mm -hmm. I mean, of the mohalla. You know what is mohalla? It's the parish. The parish. We look after. And uh, we reimburse the medical treatment. We have a regular, you know, charity works. We conduct, uh, we conduct, uh, you know, the classes, um, the preparation classes for the PSC and other examinations that way. And, and then we have the premarital counseling class. It's, it's exclusively for all the people. You know, it's not for Muslim Muslims. It's, for all the people, you know, all, all of the, all, anybody can come there. Okay. Irrespective of the caste, community, sex, anything, you know, anybody can get gender, no, no difference. Anybody can, they usually come over here, you know. Every, the regularly, every Friday, every Sunday, we will have some functions which is open to the whole Kodinglur society, community. And uh, because so many people from different states come to give oil to the lamb, yeah, yeah, yeah. story before the second, before the before the first world or the second world, I don't really examine believe it. The the oil to light the lamp came from the uh, Kovilagam, you know, the royal family here. Okay. Uh, that 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 we knew it, but then somehow it stopped. Mainly because electricity came. When electricity came, there was no more need for lighting the lamp. So then it becomes a ceremonial part. And slowly, I mean, the, 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 the tradition, we are not no more for using the oil for we have the electricity, so we are not no more using it. No more using it. When did, when did that stop? Uh, probably 50 years, probably 50, 60 years, when the electricity came naturally. Okay. And uh, how is the mosque managed and run? Yeah, now, yeah, we have a jurisdiction. Okay. We, have a jur we have defined ourselves a jurisdiction with the, with the help of other. Yeah, you know, <coughs> neighboring uh, mohallas. Mm -hmm. And all those people who live within that has to be registered in our masjid registry. And they are the members of the mohalla parish. And every two years we have a democratically elected committee. We have a democratically elected committee. Okay. Uh, and uh, they, they, they manage the affairs of the mohalla as well as the need of the masjid. And, uh, no. So, 1800. It's around 1800. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us something about the manuscript? The manuscript in your archives and the artifacts relating to this mosque? In fact, you know, we don't have much artifact because, you know, this was this was a very early masjid. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I told you, that 10th century, some constructions was going on. Yes. And again, there was a great flood in Glade, and not only flood, but there was an earthquake also in Kerala in 1341. And that changed the total topography of Kerala. And you know, the Musiris, which was the most dominant port, became no more function because the silt and all those came with the flood and then blocked the river mouth. 
it is during that period Kochi became another port. And then that is a race. So, so the decline of Kodungindur was corresponding with the uh, you know rise of Kochi. And uh, up to that period now that you know that again the oral tradition say that the masjid got damaged during that flood and there was some construction again in the 14th century. It was the 14th century masjid which we had been using till 1976. The 14th century masjid. Because you know the constructions, the artifacts we now right now inside the masjid, the, the even the lamp and the inscriptions, they were all belong to the 13th and 14th century. So we know this is the 14th century masjid. Unfortunately, the population when even it started increasing when the devotees said no more place we start we have to elaborate the masjid but it was not done in a very proper way we feel sorry about it and we are in the process of undoing the damage we will do it inshallah so we had a very ordinary uh, buddhist temple and very ordinary masjid later converted to masjid that's one thing uh, like I told you, you know, this, uh, this masjid is a gift and you know, it's well aware in the deep conscious of the society. Not only Muslim society, but everyone. Because there is a, we get a lot of respect from the general community, the Kodigal community to the masjid. That's why I wanted you to come in the early morning. You can see a lot of non-Muslims coming and praying here. They accept it. And uh, we also have a function you know, during, you know, that, you know, Vidyarambam. The initiation of our learning, you know, you, you know the Vidyarambam. Yes. During Vidyarambam, we also have a function here exclusively for the non-Muslims. Yeah. If you whenever know. wanted to come and then start doing the, uh, if they wanted the Vidyarambam here, they are welcome. Wholeheartedly welcome. We, we don't think, you know, inclusive. Yeah, yeah. very inclusive. And uh, now when the, you know, we also very fondly remember one of the occasions where the, um, our president came over here now, Dr. Abdul Kalam came here once. We had a very solemn function. The, it was within the masjid. Uh, three chairs were put, there were three chairs, one for the president of India, the other for the president of the committee, and for the king of Kodungandu. The Valiya Tambran was here. So they were the three people, say, they were sitting on the chair and all the people of Kodungandu, they were, they represent every, you know, the, the community, all communities, all sections, you know, the car without any caste difference, the Lions Club, the Rotary, Indian Medical Club, everybody, every, every one of the Kodungandu was there, they were sitting on the floor. That is a very solemn occasion, we still very fondly remember it. And, we do keep the secular nature, it's very dear to heart, really, very dear to heart. We are not going to, we won't compromise on it. This is our nation, this is a, this is a national, this is a national treasure. No, we will, we will, we will keep it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> it's my pleasure. <laughs>